Do you guys ever fall in love and actually chase something to the end of the earth? Well, that's what today's video about, ladies and gentlemen. Now, last week I made a video where I talked about Battle Eye, all right, Battle Eye coming in there and kicking me from Rainbow Six Siege. Now, nowhere in that video did I say I got banned, you know, and my accounts are still in very good standing. Unfortunately, I was unable to play Rainbow Six Siege because Battle Eye had updated and started kicking virtual machine users out. Now, from a surface level understanding, I could get it. You know, banning KVM virtual machine users, those dirty cheaters, all of them at once to protect the game, absolutely. But today's video is all about me bypassing some of that nonsense. Now, this isn't just about Battle Eye. Actually, this video is kind of like a precursor to virus investigations. I know you haven't seen a video in a while, but that's because I'm working on like a VM escape virus thing where uh, we talked about it and uh, I wanted to cover it. So in order to cover it, I actually have to secure the system that I'm actually using just so if a virus does escape the virtual machine, it doesn't cause too much havoc, so to speak. I know I can air gap and do all that nonsense, but quite frankly, this is fun to me, okay? This is like woodworking, all right? I enjoy playing with computers, so let me have my fun. Anyways, though, let's get down to it. Now, because my virtual machines were, were banned, or rather, they kept on causing me to be kicked from play, let me tell you what happened, okay? First, it started off with me getting kicked out of a game within a minute. So every time I would hit quick match and siege, I would get tossed into a lobby. I'd be picking my operator. Eventually, it just kicked me out and said, client not responding. Now, I thought I was losing my mind. I kept reinstalling BattleEye. I reinstalled Siege. I did everything, okay? I even reinstalled Windows under the virtual machine. Turns out, the day after I made that video, BattleEye or something had updated, and now I received a new error message. Disallowed program. <laughs> okay. So it seems as though BattleEye just straight up told me, listen, man, you can't do it. Now, they made a couple tweets, uh, one of them where they actually mentioned me specifically at Ordinary Gamers, and uh, in that tweet, uh, they talked about, you know, I wasn't getting banned, which I didn't say I was, I was getting kicked, they actually said normal users like Ordinary Gamers are just going to get kicked from games anyways. I guess if you wanted to get into the semantics of it, isn't getting kicked from every single game I play basically a soft fucking ban anyways? Anyway, you know what, it's not, whatever, my accounts are still in good standing. And it is what it is. But was I just going to dual boot into Windows 10 and give up? What the fuck? Hell no. Get out of here. Now in that video, I showed you guys that there was a Reddit thread where actual Linux gamers found some bypasses. And while that works, and it's pretty good enough, I sort of did that tutorial, but a lot of it was peppered into what I do on my own anyways. And because of that, all right, finally I've been able to bypass the VM checking at BattleEye, and I'm able to play Siege under a virtual machine, and I have not received a single ban. Now understand, my main account, Power Bottom Dad, has never been signed into anymore. I've actually stopped playing on Power Bottom Dad, and that account, my main account, my main account since day one of Siege! Guys, I have over thousands of hours on this account, is now dormant forever. And it is what it is. My career is over. So what I did over here is uh, just to just to guide you through the process of it. Because I use Linux, all right, uh, Linux is not just the Linux operating system. It's basically GNU plus Linux. So Linux, the kernel, is the source, the heart of my operating system. Because I use Linux, an open source OS, I can actually modify the kernel. Now understand, I use something called KVM, Kernel Virtual Machines. This is actually something inherently built into the Linux kernel. Red Hat actually brought it alongside and it's been maintained inside the Linux kernel. Linux is KVM and KVM is Linux, okay? So effectively what actually happened was we downloaded the source from kernel.org, all right, fresh from the source. And with that actual source, we actually modified the KVM files or the KVM component uh, manually. The reason why it was actually manually modified was because there are actually several ways a VM can be spotted. I think I've shown you this in virus investigations where I run programs like Paranoid Fish, where if you run it under a VM, it'll actually do a bunch of checks to tell you what it's spotting that actually notifies uh, the, the system is virtualized, right? I did this when I was testing Valorant, right? Valorant doesn't run under a virtual machine. And you can use Paranoid Fish to figure out what things you trigger. 
And a lot of these, this could be anything, all right? At the end of the day, whatever battle eye is checking, we have no idea to actually truly figure out what it's checking and what it isn't. Honestly, even if you figure it out, battle eye could update the next day and change its entire, like, procedure. So you start from zero. Understand this, cheating and anti-cheating is a fucking arms race. You're always going to have people fighting to beat the anti-cheat, and you're always going to have people who... Who, uh, who beat the cheaters or vice versa. It's how it works, okay? It's a never-ending field. For anti-cheats like Battle Eye, Easy Anti-Cheat, they're always at war with cheaters, and cheaters are always at war with them. And uh, unfortunately, the general public gets caught up in the middle as these anti-cheat and cheating tools get much more invasive. That's the fucking problem of it, right? Unfortunately, there's no simple fix. I'm not here to toss Battle Eye under the bus because I understand the use for an anti-cheat. I get it. I, I'm not an idiot. I know it. Uh, unfortunately, you know, when you get to these situations where everyone gets banned, it does kind of leave a sour taste of cock in my mouth. But anyways, let's get back to it. So modifying these basic components, uh, not just in the kernel, but also spoofing the hardware that I was passing through to the virtual machine in order to make it seem as if I was using a bare computer anyways, like a bare metal system, like Windows was not being virtualized. It is, but I'm trying to make the system more stealthy. Anyways, after modifying the Linux kernel, it came to compiling it, which is a simple process of commands. Anybody that tells you it's complicated as hell, it's really not. I mean, like, it really isn't that difficult at all. Most popular Linux distributions actually come with their own compilation scheme. Even if you wanted to do it the traditional way, it's still actually quite simple. I mean, even on Arch Linux, it's simply a matter of downloading the kernel from kernel.org, uh, modifying it, again, very important, and then recompiling it. I wouldn't recommend it unless you know what you're doing, or there's a very specific use case like this, for instance, uh, because quite often than not, you know, the best, it's best leaving it up to your package maintainer. But really, once you've modified it, you type in make, uh, and then you, you make sure that you match the cores in your system. Otherwise, it takes what is a 30-minute compilation time into some ungodly amount of time if you don't make sure that's done but once it's going you'll see a big long string of characters so i guess just play a game you know uh, chug down some g fuel use code sog if you need to but that being said sit back relax the hard work is pretty much almost done so as we install this kernel it was finally time to test it and for this i needed to make sure that n everything was fresh so i went back to uh, qemu libvert kvm whatever you want to call it built a new Windows 10 virtual machine, probably spent four to five hours combing every single thing to make sure nothing in there even screamed virtual machine. And eventually, I came out with a pretty solid virtual or real gaming computer, one with 24 gigabytes of RAM, 16 threads, and uh, RTX 2080. So all was good. Now it was time to test Rainbow Six Siege, and lo and behold, it worked. Now for this gameplay video that I'll show you, I'm not going to confirm if this ran underneath native Windows 10 or virtualized Windows 10. Um, I'm not even going to show you the name involved into it, but uh, I'll leave you to your own devices to figure out what actually happened. I'm not going to confirm or deny, just so that I don't actually confirm to... Uh, cheating on this game technically now understand over here I'm actually splitting away from the greater Linux gaming community. I love you guys But trust me what I'm doing is completely of a rogue individual Linux gamers do not appreciate this They do not like the fact that people circumvent anti-cheats despite how unethical they are So I'm doing this of my own free will if I get my account banned if battle I figures out that I've used a virtual machine and you have the receipts I will gladly accept my fucking ban. I have no doubt about it. Ban me if you find out, of course. Because uh, as long as you as long as you don't have the receipts, I think I'll be pretty damn Gucci, I think. Another reason I'm doing this is to point out the blatant hypocrisy of Ubisoft in this case. I understand Linux is not the most popular gaming platform out there, but for a company to make millions, hundreds of millions of dollars powering their online games through Linux, because let's not deny it, their, their servers are obviously running off of Linux. Uh, it's just the most economically sound thing to do and the most stable 
terrible thing to go after. But even lately with cloud gaming and Google Stadia and NVIDIA GeForce and all these other cloud gaming services, they're literally leveraging this KVM system or virtual machines in general in order to make even more millions of dollars off of players. Why is it okay to use Linux to make a bunch of money off of, but then immediately start banning players who use Linux? I understand there are hackers, but it is still hypocritical in my opinion to utilize software that's amazing in my opinion, but then to also ban it, you know, in, in these specific use cases. I understand the need to, I just don't like it. But uh, anyways... The VM checks were bypassed, and bam, I was able to play Rainbow Six Siege again. No problemo. The game was running just fine. But here's where it kind of really sparked some, some, some weirdness in me, all right? Now, as soon as I connected back to Rainbow Six Siege, they started having this event called the Mute Protocol, which is a fine event. It's whatever. Uh, I played it for a minute. It's cool. I don't... I mean, it, it was broken, let me tell you. I went to play a match of Unranked. Unranked is one of the three uh, queues that you can have on Rainbow Six Siege. One of them is Quick Match, one of them is Ranked, one of them is Unranked. Unranked is basically ranked without any ELO loss or gain. It's basically no stakes ranked play. Do you want to know what happened when I started playing Rainbow Six Siege? Every fucking match that I played, hackers galore. In fact, not just hackers. Ladies and gentlemen, Battle Eye was going on a fucking rampage. I think they hired John Wick to start banning people off of the fucking game. Because every single round, this player banned, ban, 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 ban. I wasn't banned, but everyone else was getting banned. Uh, every single match that I played, I'm pretty sure I played with somebody that had wall hacks running, aim hacks. Hell, I even saw a rook, a one speed operator, a fucking turtle, dart across border like Hussein fucking Bolt. All right, ladies and gentlemen, banning virtual machines might have stopped cheating to an extent. Hell, I'll even agree that it might fuck up cheat development to an extent. But let's not kid ourselves. The cheating problem has not fucking changed. And this is where we get into the arms race situations. The reason I use virtual machines is I do not trust Windows 10. I even covered this. I use Windows 10 in a container. For all intents and purposes, I'm using Windows 10, but... I'm getting the benefits of it while keeping myself safe from any security loophole that Microsoft overlooks. See, the benefit of using an open source operating system like Linux is A, I'm in the, I'm in the minority market share. No one's gonna hack an operating system with what, a percent of users? And nobody, all right, all right, is, is going to overlook various security vulnerabilities. I don't know what Microsoft is doing, I don't claim to know it, but that's why I virtualize. Anyways though, back to the whole scenario. Everyone's hacking. And let me just tell you, if you're a video game hacker, how fucking much of a loser do you have to be? I'm actually speaking purely to the hacker. You can call me, I'm mad. You can write in the comments, lol, this guy's mad. But how much of a troglodyte, piece of shit, waste of life do you have to be that you clicked on unranked at two in the fucking morning and decided you wanted to hack on an unranked game? There was nothing to gain or lose. All you had was your account being banned. That's it. Who the fuck, how much of an actual piece of shit loser do you have to be to do that? I mean, you could have been doing any, you have 24 hours in a day and you wasted about an hour of your life hacking on a video game for no benefit. You weren't getting money out of it. You weren't getting anything. You were just being a waste of space. And I guess if your life is that fucking worthless, then maybe I can understand the, the minute of pleasure you gain from ruining somebody else's online game. But congratulations, you're probably already banned, you cum stain. I don't understand it. So anyways, now that I've realized that Siege has plenty of hackers, it made me wonder why virtual machine banning was ever really the priority in the first place. To understand, there's numerous types of hacks that exist. It's not just virtual machines. Understand, KVM for sure is definitely an attack vector for these games because you're going to have a lot of script kiddies who build themselves a virtualized gaming computer, all right, right off the bat by watching a YouTube tutorial that I made or some other YouTuber made. They make that, and then they start manipulating memory of Windows 10. And bam, you got a fucking hacker. But here's the thing. Because they don't spend the time that I did or other people did to make their KVM stealthy, they're, they're, they're gonna get banned. Then guess what? The people who actually know how to hack your game still remain unbanned because the checks just were never going to be good enough. So to understand real quick, okay, if we had to give me a fucking stealth rating, 0% being uh, I'm on a virtual machine, 
and 100% being real computer, I'm probably at 98 to 100%, which means that if BattleEye is to ban my virtual machine, that's almost like banning a real computer. I mean, you're on such, you're on the fulcrum point, the razor's edge, where that ban, if I was to even appeal it, they probably let me go because they'd say, wow, it really does look like a, maybe we made a fuck up, let them get away. Now, don't get me wrong. There are ways that you can 100% detect it, and that's not something that I'm going to even pass around as this being a 100% foolproof way. But I actually doubt almost any anti-cheat is going to go that far to really, really knock down the KVM users. Now, here's the thing where I can totally get down to, okay? I understand from a business perspective, it's probably ideal that you ban all virtual machine users. Because let's say there's like 4,000 people using virtual machines on your game. Let's say that if BattleEye is correct, they claim that in Escape from Tarkov, 90% of virtual machine users were hackers. They probably have the receipts to prove it. You know, they probably f flagged all the hackers and they probably checked that, yeah, 90% of them were running virtual machines, 10% of them weren't. All right, and sure, maybe they went with that. It's, it's in their interest when they're at a board meeting with Ubisoft to say, yeah, we banned all these guys, despite some of them being actual false positives, right? Yeah, you get what I mean. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's a wild world, okay? All in all, I went through a billion tangents, okay? Starting off, what do we do? We, we, uh, we realized that virus investigations needed to come back, which it is. Uh, I don't know when, but it is. Uh, we recompiled our Linux kernel to make ourselves more stealthy, a la Sam Fisher style. And then I connected back to Rainbow Six Siege. And I realized, wow, we did actually beat an incredibly easy, uh, easy vector of detection. But what is the end goal for this video? What is one thing to learn? Is that anti-cheat, for the most part, as invasive, as invasive as it is, can almost be complete and utter bullshit. Okay, now I'm not here to throw battle eye under the bus. Okay, because here's the thing They're an anti-cheat and whether they're the gold standard or not. I don't care They're an anti-cheat and they're doing the best that they actually can to prevent hackers in a video game Even though those hackers exist whole fucking sale now There are other anti-cheats that I've seen that I think are actually better like uh, Blizzard's Warden which they use for Overwatch, um, even though I haven't played Overwatch in a while. I'm speaking from like a Diablo 3 perspective. Uh, you've also got Easy Anti-Cheat. As much as I hate to say it, I've probably played more Easy Anti-Cheat games like Halo Master Chief Collection, where I haven't encountered a plethora of goddamn hackers. But with all that said, you're always going to have hackers, right? And the real difference is whether you put the effort in to ban appropriately find appropriately or or whatever they spend all this time banning virtual machines wholesale right i get it but do the hackers exist wholesale yes of course siege is also a popular game so you're always going to have dumb numbskull hackers in the game anyways but it's hilarious to me knowing the experience is still shitty despite spending all that effort to get back into it and i've learned one thing is that maybe it's time for muda to just move on from siege wholesale uh, ladies and gentlemen, I, I don't know if I can announce my retirement just yet. See, just like a girlfriend to me, like a really awesome ex-girlfriend. I know the relationship is bad, but goddamn, that sex is fucking amazing. And Siege is just like that. I mean, God, do I hate her. Do I hate the guts out of this fucking person? But goddamn, is it just fun to play around? And that's just where I am in this. Uh, if Siege doesn't get better in terms of anti-cheat and how the community is, how, if the community doesn't A, become less toxic and the anti-cheating solution... Uh, doesn't become much more robust. I don't know how long I can keep playing this game, but hey At least in the end Muda fucking won the boss battle now Of course, uh, I'll only win as long as my account doesn't get banned. So who knows? Maybe I fucking jinx myself Hey, maybe when I sign on an hour after filming this I'm probably fucking banned anyways, you know man at the end of the day This isn't anyone's fault not Ubisoft's fault not my fault not battle eyes fault not Linux's fault It's the fault of hackers who ruin it for every single person involved So I'm glad you smooth brains who are what one two percent of the community has ruined it for a grand majority I hope you enjoy your fame. I hope you enjoy life. God damn. It seems like a shitty existence to me Ladies and gentlemen, uh, if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike it if you dislike it. This is me, Mudahar, and I am...